In 37th year of Meiji, on the Liaodong Peninsula in Lushan, the war between Russia and Japan took place extremely intensely. The most prominent figure in that battle was a guy named Sujimoto Seichai, who was known by the nickname Immortal Sujimoto. His body can recover from a life or death situation quickly. While his comrades fell one by one, Seichai overcame the storm of bullets and rushed straight into the enemy's siege. He single-handedly destroyed them, one by one. Some time later, Seichai was expelled from the army and went to Kikido to search for gold. The reason was because he accidentally killed an officer he hated. The drunk old man nearby knew that the immortal man wanted to make money, so he told him a story related to gold. A long time ago, you used to be able to find tons of gold nuggets the size of soybeans on the Hokkaido riverbanks. Every day, you could come back with 30 monmas worth of the stuff. Around that time, some of the Ainu were storing up tons of this gold to fight the Japanese who even after the Meiji Restoration were oppressing them by forbidding them to hunt salmon or deer and stealing their lands. And then a single man stole it all and killed the Ainu who owned it. Twenty cans of gold, enough to buy every brothel in Otaru and have money to spare. The police were after the man, so he hid the gold somewhere in Hokkaido. But he was arrested before he could tell anyone where it was and thrown into a Bashiri prison, the prison at the far end of the earth, to be sentenced to death. He wanted to tell his comrades on the outside where the gold was, but he never wrote a letter. The guards would just steal it. Everybody was looking for this gold. No matter what they did to him, he didn't tell anyone where the gold was. In the end, one of the guards turned out to be a horrible man. He cut the tendon of one of the man's legs so he couldn't escape. Then, the man tattooed the bodies of his fellow death row inmates in his cell with a code that revealed the location of the treasure. He mixed charcoal with saliva, and then slowly carved that ink in with a needle he'd kept hidden. It said only his comrades on the outside can decrypt the code. And this is what he said to the other prisoners, escape from this prison. Whoever succeeds can have half the treasure. However, to crack the code, you need all the prisoners' tattoos. Some of the less reputable members of the military heard the rumors about the tattoos and dragged the prisoners out of their cell, saying they were going to transport them. The police and the military were after the gold, too. But that was the prisoners' chance to escape. The prisoners killed all the soldiers, and every last one disappeared into the forest. That's the end of the story, and nobody knows what happened to the gold. Seichai thought this was just a fictional story and took a nap next to the fire. In his dream, Seichai remembered his teammates' words before he died, entrusting his wife and children to him to take care of. Startled awake, Seichai saw the old man from before holding a gun pointed at him. At this point, he knew that the story just now was really believable. With his background as a soldier in the army, Seichai easily took away the gun and chased the old man away. Unexpectedly, on the way, the old man became food for bears. While dragging the body out, he discovered a strange tattoo on the old man's body. It turned out that this old man was one of the prisoners in the story the old man had just told. Afraid that the bear would come back to eat part of the treasure map, Seichai took the body away from there. Not long after, the bear appeared from behind and rushed to attack Seichai. Just when Seichai was about to become food for the bear, a poisonous arrow flew to knock it down. The person who shot the arrow just now was an Ainu girl named Aserpa. Through examining the bear's body, Seichai learned that the bear that killed the old man was another one. Aserpa advised him to leave his body behind because the bear would not let anyone take its food. Even so, he was so excited about finding the treasure map that he couldn't leave the body behind. He wanted to keep his promise to his deceased friend, so he told the story of the treasure to Aserpa and begged her to help him. After hearing this, Aserpa immediately agreed to help Seichai protect the body because her father was one of the Ainu people killed in the gold mining that year. When Aserpa looked at the tattoo on the old man's body, he knew that, from the beginning, the robber had no intention of dividing this gold among the prisoners. Because to decode the map, it is necessary to skin all prisoners with tattoos. That night, the bear came to reclaim his food. While it tried to attack Aserpa, a wolf appeared to protect her. Seichai took that opportunity to shoot and kill the aggressive bear with the gun in his hand. Once safe, Seichai walked over to skin the old man to get the map. He suggested that Aserpa work together to find the treasure. Seichai says he wants money, while Aserpa wants revenge for her father. Although their goals are different, their paths are the same. If they join forces, they will be unstoppable. As the first step in the journey to find the treasure, Seichai determined that the group of prisoners with tattoos would take advantage of crowded cities to hide. Their first destination was Adaru, a port city known as Hokkaido's The Wall Street of the North. While the two asked people about tattoo information, a man noticed them. He followed Seichai into the forest without knowing that he had fallen into a serpa's trap. 
As expected, this guy is a prisoner with a tattoo related to treasure. Through interrogation, Seichai learned that the prisoners had massacred each other during their escape. This guy luckily escaped and chose to live in hiding in this city. Because Seichai promised the Serpa not to kill people indiscriminately, the prisoner was lucky to escape death. A Serpa drew the tattoo on paper, not wanting to skin him. A Serp asked about the appearance of the person who gave him this tattoo, and the prisoner said it was a faceless person named Naparabo. Before they could ask for any more information, a shot killed him. Realizing the danger, Seichai and the Serpa immediately ran away. The guy who fired the shot just now, named Ogata, also quickly chased after them. Unfortunately, on the way, he fell into a Serpa's trap, causing the gun to hang on a tree. Seichai took that opportunity to attack, but Ogata's skills were not ordinary. In just a moment, he removed the trigger from Seichai's gun, making it impossible for him to shoot. Looking at his uniform and military rank, Seichai recognized this guy as a soldier of the Hokkaido 7th Division, a unit hailed as the strongest in the army. Even so, he was still defeated by Seichai in a moment. Seichai was about to kill Ogata but was stopped by a Serpa. Unintentionally, this created an opportunity for Ogata to counterattack and run away. But before he could run far, Seichai threw a gun at his head, causing him to fall into a nearby river. Seichai thought that Ogata was dead, so he peacefully returned to the tent with a Serpa to enjoy dinner. Neither of them knew that Ogata was lucky enough to be found and saved by his teammates. The next day, Seichai and the Serpa captured a prisoner with a tattoo using the same tactic. They also did not forget to draw the code on the paper and then interrogate related information. But this guy is very stubborn. Taking advantage of Seichai and the Serpa hunting a rabbit nearby, this prisoner secretly untied himself. This guy's name is Shireshi Yashitake. An escape genius is known as the Prison Escape King. Seichai also discovered the prisoner running away and chased after him. Unfortunately, the ice broke, causing both of them to fall into the cold river. Within the next 10 minutes, if the fire cannot be lit, both will suffer from hypothermia and die. Seichai opened the box of bullets to light a fire with gunpowder, but they fell into the river, there were no bullets left. He quickly waded into the water again to search because it was his only chance to live. Shureshi saw this and immediately made a deal with Seichai, saying he would help him find bullets in exchange for Seichai letting him leave once they were both safe. Seichai had no other choice but to agree, so the escaped king immediately vomited a bullet from his mouth. After successfully lighting the fire, Shureshi told Seichai everything he knew. A total of 24 prisoners had codes tattooed on their bodies. The only prisoner he knew was the leader of the escapees. He was Hijikata Tashizu, a samurai from the shogunate period. Having finished speaking, Shureshi said goodbye to Seichai and left. Today, Seichai and the Serpa continued their journey to find the treasure. Seichai realized someone was watching them, so he immediately carried a Serp and ran away. The group of people chasing them were Agata's 7th Division comrades. Knowing he couldn't escape, Seichai gave the maps to a Serpa and told her to hand them over if caught. Having finished speaking, the two immediately separated to find a way out. Four people in the army have now divided their forces to pursue. The soldier chasing a Serpa was a talented hunter named Tanagaki. Just looking at it, he knew that the girl deliberately left fake footprints and was hiding on top of a nearby tree. Upon seeing the maps depicting Aserpa's tattoos, the soldier immediately pointed his gun at the girl. Just when it seemed that Aserpa would be captured, the wolf from before appeared again. It rushed to attack Tanagaki, causing him to faint. On the other side, Seichai was captured by three soldiers. When they were about to finish off Seich, Seichai jumped into a nearby bear den. The soldiers immediately opened fire into the bear's den and this accidentally angered the bear, who was hibernating inside. With its huge body, the bear attacked the soldiers to death. But before he was killed, the last soldier had time to destroy the aggressive bear. Seichai now exited the cave with a bear cub in his arms. The Ainu once said that the brown bear would not kill anyone who crawled into its den. A serpa was playing with the wolf when Seichai came. Seeing a stranger, the white wolf immediately ran away. The girl looked at the broken leg of the soldier and could not chase, so she lied to Seichai that Tanagaki was dead. As soon as they left, Tanagaki woke up. With the hunter's blood in him, Tanagaki decided to catch that white wolf with beautiful fur. Seichai was taken by a serpa to her village to give the cub to the Ainu people to raise. Currently, Tanagaki is living with her grandmother, Hyusai. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Tsurumi of the 7th Division ordered his men to kill his superior for daring to scold him. Due to having part of his skull blown off by a shell, the psychopath Tsurumi is no longer normal. At the same time, Hijikata went to an undefeated prisoner named Ashiyama to discuss the plan and find the Ainu's gold. 
he found a way to copy tattoos with oil paper and planned to gather people with tattoos to fight the 7th Division without having to kill each other. Currently, in addition to Seichai's group, the 7th Division and Hijikata's gang are also targeting the gold of the Ainu people. After spending a day with the Serpa in the Ainu village, Seichai learned that the white wolf that had rescued her was named Ritar. Ritar was found by a Serpa's father during a hunt, so he took it into his care. From the day he was killed, Ritar was always by a Serpa's side, and he went hunting with her. In addition, while living here, Seichai realized that a Serpa was a part of this village, especially that she was very important to her grandmother, so he decided not to let her fall into danger anymore. As soon as it was morning, Seichai quietly left the village to Otaru City to ask about people with tattoos. While eating noodles, he was suddenly surrounded by people from the 7th Division. Even though he tried his best to fight back, he was still caught in the end. Loyal Tsurumi was the one who personally interrogated Seichai about the whereabouts of the human skins. Although Seichai continuously denies everything, Tsurumi still recognizes Seichai as the immortal Sujimoto. Agata's pursuit of Seichai earlier showed that he was related to the tattoos carrying the treasure code. Seeing that Seichai refused to take his side, Tsurumi immediately tortured him. However, Seichai still did not say a word. The Serpa woke up and couldn't find Seichai. She immediately realized that something bad was happening to him, so she immediately set out to find him. By the smell of Seichai's sock, Ritar quickly found a room. But the person Ritar found was not Seichai, the prison escape king. Turns out, they took each other's socks by mistake. According to Shireishi's information, this morning there were rumors that a scarred man was escorted away by people from the 7th Division. Hearing this, a Serpa immediately forced Shireishi to lead her there. But as soon as a Serpa wasn't paying attention, Shireishi immediately ran away. However, he could not escape Ritar's pursuit. At the same time, the two soldiers who were beaten by Seichai in the morning came to seek revenge, but they did not expect that Seichai's movements were extremely agile. In such a dangerous situation, he was still able to control two soldiers at the same time, his mouth constantly screaming that he himself was the immortal Sujimoto. Fortunately for Seichai, in an urgent moment, the soldiers of the 7th Division appeared in time to stop the brawl. After this incident, Lieutenant Tsurumi ordered his subordinates to prevent the twins from coming near Seichai. Because they haven't found the map yet, they can't kill Seichai. A Serpa and Shireishi also found their way to the 7th Division's base. But before rescuing Seichai, a Serpa had to make a deal to divide the gold with Shireishi. With the nickname Prison Escape King, Shireishi easily broke into this place. Just by applying a little bit of ointment to his body, Shireishi successfully entered the cell and untied Seichai. Outside, the horses smelled Ritar's wolf scent and panicked, causing a stir among the guards. They thought there was a horse theft, so they went to check. Taking this opportunity, the twins went to Seichai to kill him for revenge. One guy stood guard outside while the other guy went inside. However, the hunter has now become the prey. Lieutenant Tsurumi arrived at the cell to find one of his soldiers dead, while Seichai was stabbed and his internal organs fell out of his abdomen. Because he did not yet have the location of the human skin map, Tsurumi ordered his subordinates to take Seichai to the best hospital to save his life. After a while, the lieutenant noticed the abnormality of the body, but it was too late. The internal organs on Seichai's body belonged to the dead soldier. Outside, Seichai knocked two escorting soldiers off their horses to escape. Thanks to a Serpa and Ritaz's help, Tsurumi was unable to chase him. When he reached safety, Seichai met a Serpa again and the two were extremely confused when facing each other because Seichai had actively left her behind. But a Serpa came to save him. Shireishi saw this scene and said that if the couple was angry with each other, they would go into a private room to talk, making both of them even more embarrassed. Meanwhile, the prison gang led by Hijikata has begun to attack other gangs in the area to increase their strength. All those who do not participate will be eliminated for knowing too much about the treasure. The next day, Seichai and a Serpa went deer hunting in the forest and discovered many footprints. A Serpa immediately realized that Agata was most likely still alive. That soldier was lucky to have his life saved by an experienced hunter. This man is said to be the best bear hunter of all time. If only he went hunting on any mountain, there would be no more bears there. The name of that famous hunter was Nihei Tetsuzu. As soon as it was dawn, Nihei and the soldier of the 7th Division, Tanagaki, began their journey to hunt wolves. Based on the feeling of fear of the dog next to them, the two knew that they were in the territory of the wolf with beautiful white fur. Meanwhile, Seichai and the Serpa still do not know that danger is approaching. They had just hunted a large deer when they saw the strange behavior of the wolf, Ritar. A Serpa realized that Ritar was urging them to hide because someone was coming. 
As soon as they finished processing enough meat to last a few days, the two immediately hid nearby and learned that the soldier who was attacked by Ratar was still alive. He is traveling with an old hunter. Returning to the tent, Seichai met Shireshi again. Shireshi smelled delicious deer meat, so he prepared wine for the party. While eating and drinking, Shireshi said that he had heard information about the tattooed person from a fur seller in town. That person's name was Nihei, and he was a notorious winter bear hunter. In addition, Shireshi also heard that the hunter was currently targeting the white wolf's fur. A serpa immediately realized Ritar was in danger. What Nihei and Tanagaki were aiming for was the wolf Ritar, not the human skins with code tattoos. The next morning, Nihei used an advanced hunting technique called Kibik so that the wolf wouldn't notice his presence. However, he did not know that Seichai's group had intervened causing the projectile to deviate from the target. Seichai suddenly appeared from behind and pointed a gun at Nihei, but unfortunately, his dog rushed towards him and knocked Seichai's gun down. Seizing that opportunity, Nihei pulled out a knife and attacked Seichai, but Seichai cut several of his fingers. While Seichai was fighting hard with Nihei, Shireishi quickly took the gun from Nihei's dog. However, Tanagaki captured a serpa to threaten them into surrendering. Because Seichai and Shireishi didn't want a serpa to be in danger, they stopped resisting and were tied up. Nihei did not want a serpa to see the bloody scene when executing Seichai and Shireishi, so he told Tanagaki to take a serpa far away from here. When he turned around, he could no longer see the two of them. Escaping the ropes is too simple for prison escape King Shireishi. The soldier who took a serpa away accidentally fell into the trap with the poisonous arrows of the Ainu. Having no other choice, Tanagaki untied a serpa so she could help him remove the poison flesh to prevent the poison from spreading throughout his body. Before a serpa could leave, Nahe came to arrest her. He knew that a serpa was the best prey to lure the white wolf, so he tied her up. As expected, Ritar rushed to bite Nihei's hand to rescue a serpa, but he did not know that Nihei's bullet was still in the gun. It seemed that Ritar would die under Nihei's gun, but suddenly another gray wolf rushed from behind and bit Nihei's neck, causing him to collapse. Until now, a serpa knew that the wolf was Ritar's wife. It has a family with a lovely cub. When it was all over, Tanagaki was taken by Shireishi to the Ainu village for treatment while Seichai peeled off the tattooed skin on Nihei's body. So Seichai's treasure hunt has another piece of the map. The next morning, Shireishi, while walking around brothels looking for girls, accidentally encountered the undefeated Ashiyama. He is also one of 24 prisoners with code tattoos on his body. He is currently joining Hijikata's gang. Shireishi immediately ran away, and Ashiyama immediately chased after him. Fortunately, there were some soldiers of the 7th Division nearby, so Shireishi asked them for help. Although protected by the forces of the 7th Division, Shireishi still could not escape Ashiyama. Just as the soldier shot Ashiyama in the shoulder, his comrades threw bombs and opened fire to fight back. Shireishi also took that opportunity to leave. At the same time, another explosion at the bank occurred, catching Lieutenant Tsurumi's attention. As soon as Tsurumi arrived, he saw that Hijikata had already left. What he wants is not money but a katana sword called Izumi Nakami. Through the prostitutes, Shireishi obtained the clothes of the undefeated Ashiyama. To prove to Seichai and the Serpa that he himself was not useless, Shireishi went with the Ainu dog to find Shireishi. However, during the eavesdropping process, Shireishi was once again captured by Ashiyama. To save his life, Shireishi let Hijikata copy the tattoo on his body using oil paper. In addition, he also revealed his partners and accepted to join Hijikata's gang. Upon release, Shireishi informed Seichai's group about the next tattooed prisoner. His name is Henmi, and he specializes in killing people as entertainment for his own perverted passion. According to recent information, many fishermen were murdered, so they went to the beach together to look for clues. By accident, they met a Chapo, a Serpa's uncle, who was whaling nearby, so they immediately helped. While chasing whaling, an unfortunate fisherman fell into the cold ocean water. Seichai immediately turned back and took the fisherman to shore to warm him up and regain his body temperature. However, Seichai and the Serpa did not know that the person they saved was the perverted murderer Henmi. While changing clothes, a fisherman accidentally saw a tattoo on Henmi's body, so he killed him. Now he is waiting for a good opportunity to attack the next target. The person he chooses is Seichai. Henmi pretended to invite Seichai and the Serpa to his house for dinner to wait for the opportunity to attack him. While going to the bathroom, a Serpa discovered the body of the fisherman from earlier, and immediately realized the danger that was coming to Seichai. But when she returned, Seichai was tricked by the murderer into going to a deserted place. Unfortunately, the place where Henmi arrived was guarded by soldiers of the 7th Division. 
Without hesitation, Henny immediately swung his knife, killing two soldiers in the blink of an eye and enjoying his own perverted hobby. The gunshots alerted other soldiers, so Seichai had to carry the murderer and run to the sea. At the right time, Seichai met Shireshi again and was saved by a serpa's arrow, so Seichai escaped the stab from Henmi. Knowing the target at hand, Seichai did not hesitate to swing his knife to attack Henmi. Even though Seichai repeatedly stabbed him, his expression was extremely happy. He felt excited to die in his hands. Lieutenant Tsurumi's group chased them to the beach, but it was too late. The human skin with the tattoo on Henmi's body belonged to Seichai's group. At the same time, in the Ainu village, Tanagaki was attacked by two traitor soldiers, Ogata and Kuhei. But he was lucky to have only minor injuries. Not wanting to involve the Ainu people, he led two soldiers into the forest and decided to use Nehei's gun to teach them a lesson. Facing a winter hunter like Tanagaki made Ogata and Kuhei extremely wary because the snowy forest environment was his advantage. Although his leg was injured, thanks to the brown bear's footprints left in the snow, Tanagaki found the place where the bear hid a deer carcass in the snow. This will be the most dangerous and also the safest place for him. After a cold night, Ogata and Kuhei found the fireplace where Tanagaki rested for the night. Kuhei steps forward as bait and observes the situation, while Ogata provides support from afar. Unfortunately, the bear suddenly appeared and slapped Kuhei's right ear. In that forced situation, Ogata had to open fire to save Kuhei and reveal his position. Seizing that opportunity, Tanagaki shot straight at him, but the bullet hit his binoculars. A soldier of the 7th Division also showed up and informed Tanagaki that Tsurumi's army was coming here to arrest two traitors. As soon as he finished speaking, Ogata shot him straight in the head. Tsurumi's army also arrived just in time, so Tanagaki and Ogata paused the battle and retreated. Kuhei was unfortunately caught. As a result, the perverted lieutenant cut off his remaining ear. But Tsurumi did not kill him. He used his hatred for Seichai to force Kuhei to reveal the other traitors. Seichai's group was hunting fish near the stream when they accidentally met a man named Kirore. A serper recognized him because he was a very close friend of her father when he was alive. In addition, Kirorank also recognized the immortal name Sujimoto because he used to be an engineer specializing in explosives in the army. Through talking with Kirorank, a serpa learned that Hijikata had just stopped by the Ainu village to look for her. The special thing is that he also knows the girl's Japanese name is Asuko, but this name is only known to her dead parents. Not to mention the gold robber Naparabo once told the prisoners that Asuko was in Adaru. Maybe he wanted to entrust this gold to a serpa. This means that the person who robbed the Ainu of their gold was a serpa's father. Now what they need to do is go to a Bashiri prison to meet Naparabo. If he was truly a serpa's father, there would be no need to look for tattooed human skins. Kirorank also wanted to participate in this journey. He did not need to divide the gold, but just wanted to see that the remaining gold after dividing it among everyone would be returned to the Ainu people. After resolving the misfortune, the group immediately returned to the village, mounted their horses, and headed straight to a Bashiri prison, the end of the world. At Sapporo World Hotel, the undefeated Ashiyama has booked a room here, and he is craving the hotel owner's body. Ashiyama's fun was ruined when Seichai's group also came here to rent a room. Shireishi was delighted to meet the beautiful boss, but neither he nor Ashiyama realized that the girl in front of them was a male prisoner with a code tattoo. She was formerly an old doctor named Inaga, a man who specialized in disguising himself as a girl. She is extremely narcissistic and puts appearance above everything to the point of torturing and eating attributes she desires to possess. Thanks to that, she can own this beautiful body. Inaga's real purpose is to bewitch Ashiyama and take away Aserpa's beautiful eyes. However, the plan was messed up when Shireishi kept following her. Afraid that Shireishi would encounter Ashiyama, Inaga decided to eat Shireishi first. Inaga pulled the secret switch, causing Shireishi to fall into a dark torture room below the hotel, and Inaga tied him up. Ashiyama returned to his room drunk and pulled the wrong switch, so he also fell into the basement. Seeing Shireishi, Ashiyama thought that the person in front of him was Inaga, so he almost did it. Meanwhile, Inaga was about to eat Aserpa's eye when she was discovered by Seichai. Inaga immediately threw two syringes at Aserpa in an attempt to destroy her eyes. But, luckily, Seichai was able to block it with his hand. Unable to defeat Seichai, Inaga revealed the identity of the undefeated Ashiyama to let the two fight each other. Accidentally, while fighting, the immortal youth fell into the basement. Inaga saw that she would be exposed, so she pulled the switch to erase everything. 
Seichai in the basement discovered that a lot of alcohol was being released through a secret place. Accompanied by that, a fire appeared. A huge explosion occurred, and the Sapporo World Hotel burned to ashes. Luckily, no one in Seichai's group was injured. Ashiyama and Inaga were also not found. It seemed they were still alive after the explosion just now. Just early in the morning, Shireishi sneaked out to give Ashiyama a copy of the tattoo of the perverted murderer Henmi that Seichai and his group captured. Ashiyama takes Shireishi to Medianaga and learns extremely important news. Shireishi then continued to return to Seichai's group. Shireishi had used all of the group's money to play horse races, so they needed to go to Naganuma to hunt for more money and also stop by the Ainu village to visit Aserpa's relatives. There they met a prophet named Inkarmat. She can see the future and the past and is worshipped as a god by many people. Through conversation, Inkarmat clearly knew the purpose of Seichai's group. She then cast a hexagram about the future for Seichai's group using a fox skull. She said that its teeth facing down symbolized a bad sign and advised everyone to stop before it was too late. Seeing this, Shireishi was half confused and immediately asked for some numbers for the upcoming horse race. Coincidentally, the results were consistent with the fox skull's prediction. In the final horse race, Kirarank will be the one driving the number 3 horse. Shireishi still believed in Inkarmat's prediction, so he bet all his money on horse number 6. The result gave him a very painful blow because Kirarank was the winner. At that time, Inkarmat told Aserpa that she had beautiful eyes identical to her father's and then disappeared without a trace. Currently, Inkarmat's identity remains a mystery. At the same time, Ogata, after escaping the pursuit of the 7th Division, accidentally encountered Hijikata's gang. He handed over a piece of tattooed human skin and asked to join his gang. Back to Seichai's group, Shireishi now reveals the information he got from Lanaga. Inaga said that in a house in Yuyubari, there were taxidermied human mounts made from corpses and a skin with a strange tattoo. After hearing this information, everyone immediately agreed to go straight there. After all, their group already had five skins, so the best plan was to collect them since they couldn't know if Aserpa's father was really Naparabo or not. While Seichai's group was still on their way to Yuyubari to find information about the tattooed skin, Lieutenant Tsurumi was one step ahead of them. Surumi went to the house of a stuffed animal artist named Edegai. He is a highly skilled craftsman and has an extremely perverse passion for dead human skins. Because the air in this area is cold and dry, corpses take a long time to decompose, so Edegai often robs graves to skin the dead to make extremely disgusting costumes. A miner with a code tattoo on his body who died a few days ago also became his work of art. This is also the reason why Lieutenant Tsurumi is here. After a while of chatting, Edegai learned that the lieutenant came here not to arrest him for grave robbing but to cooperate in creating human skin panels with fake code tattoos. Tsurumi wanted him to create a fake code that only the two of them could distinguish. Currently, Hijikata's gang also holds six code tattoos, including two copies on oil paper taken by Shireishi from Seichai's group and one obtained by Agata. Hijikata is suspicious that Naparabo is a guerrilla soldier from the far east of Russia, now pretending to be an Ainu in Japan to monopolize the gold for the purpose of fighting the war in his country. If so, then Naparabo's ally outside the prison was likely a guerrilla posing as an Ainu. That person could be Kirorank. At the same time, Edegai completed fake tattoo skins according to the lieutenant's request, but the ink color between the two human skins was very different. To have the same color as the prisoners, the skin must be taken from a living person. This difficult problem gave Edegai a huge headache. In the Ainu village, Inkarmat went to Aserpa's maternal home. Through the hexagram, she said that one of the three people next to Aserpa would betray her. This made Aserpa's grandmother extremely worried. To repay the favor of saving his life, Tanagaki decided to leave the village to protect Aserpa. Inkarmat also took this opportunity to follow him. Tanagaki does not know that Inkarmat is secretly collaborating with Lieutenant Tsurumi. After many days and nights of research, Edegai finally completed six fake tattoo skins. However, before these tattoos could reach Lieutenant Tsurumi's hands, Ogata arrived. As soon as he discovered that a guard in his house had been killed, Edegai immediately put away the tattoos and hid in the fur of the bear cub. Ogata entered the house and discovered clues about the fake tattoos. Before he could investigate further, Seichai and Shireishi arrived. Knowing that the escaped king was Hijikata's man, Ogata asked him to trick Seichai into getting out. Ogata chased after Edegai and found him in an old mine. However, Sergeant Tsukishima of the 7th Division quickly rescued Edegai with a coal transport vehicle. Seichai and Shireishi also discovered the target, so they immediately jumped into another vehicle to follow. 
Just as they were about to capture Edegai, the railway split into two intersections, causing Seichai to miss this rare opportunity. Thinking that Edegai had escaped Ogata's capture, suddenly a terrible explosion occurred due to a methane gas leak. The impact of the explosion left Edegai trapped under rubble. Edegai knew he couldn't meet the lieutenant to hand over the fake human skins, so he asked Tsukishima to tell Tsurumi how to distinguish between fake and real skins. Seichai and Shireishi are still trapped in the mine and have almost lost their lives because of the gas. Suddenly, Ushiyama rushed inside and carried them both out safely. Now the fake human skins are the important problem, so Seichai and Hijikata's gang worked together to find the answer. The group returned to Edegai's house and discovered a total of six fake human skins had been made. However, the solution to distinguishing between real and fake is still a mystery. Tsukishima of the 7th Division was lucky to survive and gave the fake human skin to Tsurumi. The message Edegai sent him was just one word, iron. Tsurumi immediately understood how to distinguish between real and fake human skins because of her previous conversation with Edegai. Tsurumi knew that Edegai treated animal skins very carefully with tannic acid from kiboi fruit. This acid will dissolve in water and, when reacting with iron, will create a black color on the leather. This is also the key to distinguishing fake tattoo skins made by Edegai. Through investigation, the bodies were brought out of the mine. Seichai and Hijikata's crew realized that Edegai's fake tattooed skins were given to Tsurumi because they couldn't find Sergeant Tsukishima's body. Hijikata goes to Edegai's house looking for clues to distinguish the fake skins. Anticipating this, Tsurumi ordered men from the 7th Division to surround and set fire to Edegai's house. Both sides began to fight each other fiercely. Although the 7th Division had the advantage in numbers, they were no match for Agata and Hijikata. Nikedu of the 7th Division wanted to find Seichai to avenge his younger brother, but Hijikata cut off his right leg. Seichai and Ashiyama's group also returned as reinforcements. Finally, they successfully left Edegai's house. Hijikata suggested that they split into two retreating groups and meet up at a Shaitsu. Seichai's purpose in cooperating with Hijikata is that he wants to know whether a Serpa's father really robbed the Ainu people of their gold. He wanted to be a witness until she found out the truth. At Barado, Tanagaki and Inkarma were inquiring about Aserpa's whereabouts when they discovered an Ainu boy following them. This boy's name was Sikapasi. He lost his parents at a young age, so he decided to follow Tanagaki because he admired his hunting skills. Inkarmat also asked for the boy to come along because that would make it easier for them to pretend to be a family of three. Back to Hijikata's group, Mr. Inkarmat said that if they did not know how to distinguish between real and fake skins, even if they had all the skins, they still would not be able to decipher the code. Hijikata plans to use his prison escape king's ingenuity to meet Naparabo at a Bashiri prison. He is the only one who can do this. Just early in the morning, Shireishi sneaked out to play but was captured by soldiers of the 7th Division. Hijikata stood nearby, seeing Shireishi being captured and speechless. After Hijikata returned to inform his teammates, he decided to go rescue Shireishi with Kirorank. Nagakura and Inaga will stay here to join up with Seichai's group. When Shireishi was being escorted through a town, Hijikata disguised himself as a green bean candy seller to give him notice. Inside the note, they said they would save him at the Kamai Cotton Hanging Bridge. As planned, Hijikata blocked the bridge and then waited until the soldiers walked across, then cut the bridge ropes. Below is a fast-flowing river. Kirorank sailed a waiting boat to pick up Shireishi, but because of Shireishi's hesitation, the best opportunity passed away. Lieutenant Tsurumi was also welcoming a very important person at this time. He was General Arasaka, the gun design genius. He is currently holding the position of Lieutenant General of the Japanese Army. By the way, during this visit, the Lieutenant General also designed Nikkeidu a prosthetic leg with a powerful close-range gun built into it. At this time, Hijikata's group had gathered with Seichai's group in the suburbs of Asahikawa. There is also the appearance of a prisoner with a code face tattoo named Suzukawa Kiyohiro. This old man is a marriage fraudster with extremely good acting and disguise skills. Hijikata's purpose for summoning Kiyohiro here is to disguise himself as Inudu Shirasuke, who is the warden of a Bashiri prison. They will use this method to save Shireishi from the 7th Division. So the next morning, Kiyohiro disguised himself as Inudu, along with Sachai wearing a mask, and went straight to the military camp to meet Lieutenant Colonel Yadagawa directly to discuss returning Shireishi to a Bashiri prison. Kiyohiro, with his top acting skills, successfully fooled Lieutenant Colonel Yadagawa into believing that Kiyohiro was the warden of a Bashiri prison, coming to reclaim the escaped prisoner. However, everything was going well when this news reached Lieutenant Tsurumi. 
Just as Kiyohiro was about to trick Lieutenant Colonel Yadagawa into returning Shireishi, suddenly 2nd Lieutenant Koido was ordered by Lieutenant Tsurumi to arrive. Koido used Chinchin Nukan Amashita not to talk to Kiyohiro because he knew that Warden and Yudu was very fluent in this language. Although Kiyohiro was able to answer Koido's questions, Koido knew Warden and Yudu had not been drinking, and Kiyohiro's answers sold him out. Without hesitation, Koido immediately pulled out a gun and shot the fake in Yudu, and Seichai also took a bullet in the shoulder. Lieutenant Colonel Yadagawa was angry at being tricked and attempted to kill Shireishi. Seichai rushed to block the bullet and pulled Shireishi out the window to escape with Ogata, who was assisting outside. Thanks to stealing the balloon from Lieutenant General Arasaka's experiment, the three escaped the capture of the 7th Division. The soldiers did not dare to shoot because the balloon was able to fly thanks to hydrogen gas. If a bullet comes in, it will explode, and Shireishi's tattooed skin will no longer be intact. After landing safely, a Serpa used herbs to treat Seichai's wound, and then they all continued on their way because the army of the 7th Division was still aggressively chasing them. They went to the Daisetsuzen mountain range when suddenly a bone-chilling wind blew. If they continued moving, they would die, so a Serpa suggested that everyone rest overnight here. With the rich experience of the Ainu people, if they want to survive this night, they must keep their bodies warm. By chance, a group of deer appeared nearby, so they hunted them and crawled into the deer's body to keep warm. Before resting, a Serpa asked Seichai what food he liked to eat the most. He answered her that he liked to eat dried persimmons because it was a dish that was abundant in his hometown. A Serpa said that when everything was over, she wanted Seichai to take her to his hometown because she also wanted to try dried persimmons with him. The next morning, Tanagaki's group was lucky enough to meet a Serpa and everyone on the mountainside. They then returned to the Ainu village to attend the Kamai Hopunair festival. A Serpa explains that this festival means the departure of the god. The Ainu people would send the bear they had just hunted to the afterlife to the gods. After a night of eating, drinking, and resting in the village, as soon as it was dawn, they prepared to continue on their journey. Tanagaki told Seichai that he would accompany a Serpa to repay her grandmother for saving his life. Meanwhile, 2nd Lieutenant Koido is receiving criticism from the lieutenant for letting prisoner Shireishi escape. But luckily, he was able to defeat Kiyohiro and peel off his tattooed skin, so Tsurumi did not punish him. During this meeting, Koido said that he met Ogata, the person who betrayed the 7th Division. In addition, he also smeared the fact that his father was the former commander of the 7th Division, who committed suicide. Ogata is also talking about his own past. At that time, his father was a major in the Royal Guard Regiment. Because he lost face by accidentally having a child with a Jaisha, he abandoned the mother and child. Since his father abandoned him, Ogata's mother has returned to her hometown to live. Day after day, she always cooked Anko fish hot pot because her father had praised it as delicious, so she hoped that he would come back to eat it. Even though he was young, Ogata understood at that time that his mother was madly in love with his father. To end his mother's days of living in pain, he put rat poison in the hot pot. At that time, Ogata thought that his father would definitely come to his mother's funeral. However, that was just what he thought. His father did not come to see her in the last moments of her life. After Ogata joined the army, his father rose to the rank of lieutenant general and was the commander of the 7th Division. He has another son with a noble wife, and his half-brother is also working in the army. During an attack at Hill 203, Ogata shot him in the head from behind, not because he was jealous of him or because he wanted revenge on his father. Ogata just wanted to see if his father thought of him when his son died. The truth is that, until now, Ogata's father still sees him as a defective son and just a failure. Upon hearing this, he ended his father's life and left with Lieutenant Tsurumi. The central government then held the 7th Division responsible and considered the commander's death a suicide. Just early in the morning, while Seichai and everyone were looking for food, they suddenly discovered a black cloud flying at high speed. As it approached, Ogata said that it was not clouds but a huge swarm of locusts. Not only do they eat leaves, but people's clothes will also be eaten. To be safe, the men immediately ran into the house, while Inkarmat was fortunately taken to the river by a serpa to avoid the locusts. By the way, a serpa immediately asked Inkarmat about everything Inkarmat knew about a serpa's father. Inside the house, five men brought the sea otter out to cook hot pot. After eating a few bites, Seichai discovered that the men in front of him were very attractive. Then they all took off each other's clothes to release their desires. It turned out that the otter's meat made the men excited. At this time, Inkarmat said the girl's father, Wilk, was not someone who would kill the Ainu for gold. Inkarmat met Wilk when he first arrived in Hokkaido and spoke the Ainu language with a Karafudo accent. 
He has deep blue eyes like a serpa. At that time, Wilk said that his father was Polish and his mother was Anu from Karafudo. Because they opposed the Tsar in Russia, they were exiled to the faraway capital. Since he was a child, Wilk has stood side by side with the minority tribes in Russia, fighting for independence. He fought and was wounded, then fled to Hokkaido. At that time, Inkarmet was just as old as a Serpa is now and had met Wilk. The two go together for a long time. A Serpa's father adopted all the beliefs, customs, and languages of the Ainu people. Inkarmet said that Wilk was killed by the man who was his comrade. That traitor is Kirorank. Meanwhile, five men were lying and panting because they had wrestled so hard just now. Seichai told everyone not to tell anyone about last night. While Tanagaki was still unconscious, Inkarmet came to seduce him. She said that she was also affected by the otter's meat. The next morning, a Serpa met Kirorank and asked directly whether he killed her father or not. Kirorank still didn't understand why she asked like that when Inkarmet pulled out a horse racing ticket with Kirorank's fingerprints. When comparing this fingerprint with the fingerprints at the scene of the Ainu massacre that year, it matched Kirorank's fingerprints. As soon as Agata heard this, he pointed his gun at Inkarmat's head because he knew she was colluding with Lieutenant Tsurumi. The reason is that the only person who went directly to the scene of the massacre that year was the lieutenant, and he was the only person who possessed all the fingerprints. Kirarank tries to explain to Aserpa that her father is Naparabo, who is still alive in a Bashiri prison. He said that what Inkarmat said was slander. Now everyone in the group begins to doubt each other. Seeing this, Seichai decided that they would head straight to a Bashiri prison to confirm whether Naparabo was Aserpa's father or not. Lieutenant Tsurumi also soon learned about this and arranged for his men to go to a Bashiri prison as spies. According to the initial investigation, Naparabo would be moved from room to room every day, so it was impossible to determine the location of his room. However, the new soldier of the 7th Division was discovered by the head warden, Inyudu. He ordered the captain to arrange for the prisoners to eliminate the spy and turn him into pig food. But, surprisingly, this guy is very strong. Even though he was alone, the prisoners still couldn't touch him. At Lake Kashero, every night a group of blind robbers appears, specializing in attacking passersby. Relying on their super-sensitive hearing, they use darkness as an advantage and easily rob people. Seichai's group stopped there and heard the surrounding people talk about those blind robbers. They said the leader had a strange tattoo on his body. Shureshi immediately recognized that he was a lucky survivor among the exploited prisoners on Mount Iwa. His name is Tony Anji. Shureshi added that the prisoners who were exploited at Mount Iwo were said to not be able to return alive. Iwo means sulfur, an important resource for making gunpowder and many other things. At a Bashiri prison, the prisoners were exploited by the prison chief, Inudu, to mine sulfur for him. When the sulfuric acid released by the sulfur seeped into the eyes of the pioneers, it caused them to become permanently blind. Perhaps Tony's band of robbers were the ones who managed to escape before being killed. Seichai's group planned to go into the forest to find the bandits at dawn, but did not expect that the bandits were one step ahead and appeared in the men's bathroom. The strange noises the robbers made were the sounds of clicking tongues. They use echoes to observe things in the dark. As soon as the raid began, a nearby light was quickly extinguished with a shot from the robbers, forcing Seichai's group to retreat into the forest, preventing them from entering the inn where there was light. Both sides began a fierce gun battle in the darkness. A Serpa luckily found Seichai's place, and the two successfully hid. Meanwhile, Inkarmat, Tanagaki, and Kirorank are being chased by bandits. All three of them rowed the boat out to the middle of the lake but were still shot. Wanting to protect Inkarmat, Tanagaki took the bullet for her. After being rescued, Inkarmat learned that her predicted fate could still change. Tanagaki was the one who changed her fate. As the sky gradually brightened, the bandits began to retreat to their base. Seichai and Agata followed the trail to the abandoned boarding house believed to be their lair. The windows inside were covered with glass, preventing light from entering, causing a disadvantage for Seichai's group. However, no matter how harsh the situation is, Seichai will still fight with all his might. Tony Angie was discovered by Seichai, and the two fought a fierce battle. Just as the battle came to an end, Hijikata and Ushiyama suddenly appeared. They got here thanks to the Ainu dog that followed the scent of Nihei's gun that Tanagaki was holding. Because they knew each other at a Bashiri prison, Hijikata gave the blind robber a chance to live and recruited him into his gang. Hijikata, after hearing Seichai tell the story between Inkarmat and Kirorank, came up with a plan. He had someone take pictures of everyone and then send pictures of the two suspects to someone to investigate. 
The group will put that aside for now and head straight to a Bashiri prison. Surrounding the prison are vertical cliffs and there are many armed soldiers. This is the time to use the Escape King's talents. Because he was once imprisoned here, Shireshi determined that the wall next to the river was the most vulnerable place. As soon as the target was determined, the group set up a tent and dug a secret tunnel inside to bypass the soldiers on patrol. Kirorank and Tanagaki pretended to be Ainu people to catch salmon here. They said they would bribe the patrolman with five fresh salmon a day to catch seafood here. During dinner, Tanagaki had just finished half a bowl of rice when the boy Sikaposi snatched his bowl of rice and gave it to Inkarmat. People didn't understand what was going on, but a serpa explained that this was the marriage proposal custom of the Ainu people. If the man eats half of the bowl and then gives the rest to the girl, it means they are engaged. Tanagaki heard that and immediately left, and Karmat also quickly followed him. Tanagaki said that he still has work to do, which is to bring a serpa back to Husai, her grandmother. When it's all over, Tanagaki will give half of his bowl of rice to Inkarmat again. The next night, Tony Angie guided Seichai, a serpa, and Shireshi into the prison through the tunnel. Agata is responsible for being outside as a sniper to guard against any emergencies. Tanagaki was on the other side of the river, preparing boats for the retreat. Hijikata, Kirarek, and Ashiyama will wait in the room until everything goes smoothly. At the five radial wards of a Bashiri prison, the escaped king and his teammates easily broke into the room believed to be holding Naparabo. However, when the match in Seichai's hand was lit, a serper realized that the faceless person before her eyes was not her father. Seichai knew he had fallen into the trap of prison guard Anudu, so he immediately signaled Tony Angie to drag a serpa out of here first while he and Shireshi would deal with the situation here. At this time, Inkarmat also came to advise Tanagaki to leave here because the forces of the 7th Division were attacking in full force. It was Inkarmat who informed Lieutenant Surumi of everyone's location. Chief Warden and Nudu knew that the 7th Division wanted to rob prisoner Naparabo, so he immediately ordered the bridge leading to the mainland to be destroyed. But Tsurumi had expected this. In fact, his army will attack by water directly at a Bashiri prison. In addition, the lieutenant also invited Admiral Haiji Koido, who was also the father of 2nd Lieutenant Koido, to participate in this fierce battle. As soon as the bridge was destroyed, dozens of warships of the 7th Division began to attack. With extremely powerful firepower, capturing a Bashiri prison is not too difficult. Tsurumi plans to blame everything on the locust epidemic and report it to the central government. He believes that no one from the center will come to the ends of the earth to investigate. With powerful firepower and a well-trained army, a Bashiri prison was completely defeated. Hijikata and Tony Angie are leading a serpa to Naparabo's actual cell. A serpa realized that Hijikata had already known that Warden and Yudu had switched the real Naparabo's cell to another one. The reason Tony Angie led Seichai and Shireshi into the detention center was to act as bait to attract the enemy's attention. Currently, Lt. Tsurumi and 63 close subordinates have stormed the prison to threaten Seichai into surrendering. In a situation where it seemed like they had no way out, a prison guard pulled a secret switch. That is the device that simultaneously unlocks 700 prison cells of Japan's most dangerous prisoners. With no other choice, the 7th Division was forced to attach knife blades to their guns and then engage in a life and death battle with these dangerous criminals. Taking advantage of the chaos, Shireishi and Seichai crawled under the cell. But unfortunately only Shireishi knew how to break his shoulder to get out while Seichai was stuck. Inudu had now gone to the chapel to find Naparabo, and Hijikata had already known this, so he and the Serpa and Tony Angie were waiting in ambush. Now all that remains is to wait for him to escort Naparabo out. However, when they weren't paying attention, a Serpa ran away because the only person she trusted was the immortal Sujimoto. On the way, the girl was accidentally saved by Kirarank, and by chance, they both met Shireishi and learned that Seichai was stuck in prison. Serpa immediately gave her knife to Kirorank and asked him to give it to Seichai. This is a knife made by her father, so when he sees it, he will recognize it. Kirorank went to the place where Seichai was trapped and freed him with explosives. After reporting that Naparabo was at the chapel and giving Arshipa's knife to Seichai, Kirorank returned to Arshipa. The soldier Nikedu, who had a deep hatred for Seichai, heard the explosion and followed Seichai down the tunnel, intending to kill him. But the plan failed. The two then fight each other, and Nikedu's prosthetic leg fires a bullet, injuring Seichai. Even so, Seichai still wins and knocks Nikedu unconscious. Hijikata and Tony Angie, while rushing into the chapel, were suddenly attacked by Anyudu. The blind prisoner died, and only Hijikata was still alive. 
The two will have a true swordplay match with each other. Even though Seichai was seriously injured, he still tried his best to crawl to a serpa. On the way, Seichai accidentally encountered a faceless man. Looking into his deep blue eyes, Sachai knew that this was Naparabo, a serpa's biological father. As soon as Seichai met Naparabo, he took out Arshipa's Makiri knife to show him. As soon as he saw it, he knew this was something he used to make for his daughter. Seichai is now certain that a serpa's father is Naparabo. But to get information about the Ainu gold, he had to meet his daughter. At the chapel, Hijikata is still trying his best to fight in Yudu. Due to his old age, Hijikata appeared weaker. However, Hijikata took advantage of Inudu's carelessness, immediately splashed blood into Inudu's eyes, blocking his vision, and then suddenly struck him with a finishing blow. Seichai, after meeting Arshipa's father, was very disappointed. He did not want her to see her murderer father again, who killed the Ainu people and robbed them of their gold. At this time, Naparabo said that he wanted to entrust her future to her. From a young age, he trained her to become a guerrilla soldier with the aim of letting a serpa lead the Anu people. In the distance, on the roof, Inkarmet called a serpa and gave her binoculars. This was also the first time she saw her father again. Even though his face had been peeled off, his deep blue eyes were unmistakable. When Naparabo saw his daughter before his eyes, Naparabo turned to tell Seichai that he was not the murderer who killed the Anu people. Just as he was about to open his mouth to reveal the gold mark, a bullet flew through his head, killing Naparabo. The second shot rang out, and the next person to fall was the immortal Sujimoto. The person who killed the two of them was Agata. To make sure the target was dead, Agata fired a few more shots at the two corpses. Luckily, it missed Seichai's head. Seeing this, Tanagaki rushed out, dragged them both inside, then carried the immortal Sujimoto, and ran away. As soon as he reached the gate, he discovered Inkarmat lying in a pool of blood. She said that before Naparabo was shot, Kirarank signaled Agata. Just as she finished speaking, Lieutenant Tsurumi and his soldiers arrived. Outside the prison, Agata and Kirarank lied to Shureshihi and the Serpa, saying that the immortal Sujimoto was dead. This caused the Serpa extreme pain. Then all four of them quickly escaped from a Bashiri prison. The next morning, when the battle was over, Seichai was still alive, even though the bullet had gone straight into his brain. But thanks to the surgical skills of old Dr. Inaga, Seichai was able to overcome the critical situation. Elenkarmat is still alive, but her condition is somewhat dangerous. She tells Tanagaki that Kirarank's group is definitely heading to Karafudo. Lieutenant Tsurumi obtained the tattooed skins of the Seichai group. He also believed that Kirarank took a serpa away to reconnect with his Russian ethnic minority comrades who were fighting guerrillas in the Far East. If Kirarank meets them, everything will be dangerous. So the lieutenant sent two of his elite soldiers, 2nd Lieutenant Koido and Sergeant Tsukishima, to support the immortal Sujimoto and Tanagaki. Tsurumi will stay behind to clean up the aftermath of the prison battle, so she'll join in later. Immediately, Admiral Haiji took Sujimoto and headed straight south. Seichai vowed that he would definitely bring a serpa back safely. 